feel them now When I close my eyes Yeah, my chest gets loud I can feel my breath I can hear that sound I'ma stand my ground I'ma scream and shout I'll be where I wanna be And I'll make my way Don't make no apologies Cause I'm here to stay Hey guys, Daniel here. We're here at Venice Beach. Uh, awesome setup for uh, for the Herbalife Triathlon. We're gonna do the Pro AM. Life is good. So this is basically the swim for uh, for Sunday's race, and uh, I'm just gonna jump in and see what uh, what it feels like. Paul Felder and I are doing the Pro AM of the Herbalife Olympic Distance Triathlon. So we have a, a athlete from the Challenge Athletes Foundation doing the swim i'm going to do the bike and then paul's going to break his pb in the 10k off the bike so he's going to he's going to bring it home bring the victory home for sure the pto pro am race this weekend so just doing a little shake out jog break a sweat this this is where it's happening so super excited the pto decided to Door on a race. We're doing a pro am uh, relay uh, uh, race. Uh, so we have about uh, five or six teams. So I have my teammate Sam Long, uh, who's going to be riding the bike, and then uh, my my swimmer is going to be Emily, Emily Gray, who's a three-time Paralympic swimmer from South Africa. And it's, it's just very exciting, very exciting time to be in triathlon, especially here in LA. Well, what a setting we're being treated to for the first. PTO Pro-Am here on Venice Beach. Getting ready there, the PTO athletes are ready and waiting. I'll feed you and there they go. We've got Jamal Hill, Alyssa Seeley, and they are at the back of the pack. Oh, that's Emily Gray in fourth right now. Now we're taking a look here at, that's I think that's Chris Hammer. Chris Hammer, yeah. Look at the competitive nature of the swim now, Barry. Yeah. As we see Ahalia Lettenberger in the pink cap right on the hip of Chris Hammer. She's playing this to absolute perfection, no question. We see them turn at the final boy to bring it home onto the beach. So Chris, the first in to T1, hands over to Heather Jackson. Wow, what a great swim by Haven Shepard. 
Jackson will get in the transition zone. And there goes Lionel Sanders. Uh, and there goes the tag. There goes Mr. Sam Long. Jamal Hill is approaching the beach. There's no question about it. Lionel Sanders comes to play every single day. Right, the guy is built different. And, uh, here we go, our, Barry. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if he says anything. He even looks over. He's Heather had a look, yeah. but Lionel's dialed in yeah. as he passes Heather Jackson on the course. going after his PB here in Los Angeles today. The athletes are on the final 10K stretch then of this PTO Pro Am. Oh, there's Heather Fell, Paul Felder there. I mean, look at the pace he's going at. What a just incredible man, incredible athlete, no question about it. Fell is absolutely having she a phenomenal run. Look at her go. Oh no, I think that Heather's gone the wrong way. He's managed to gain some ground. She and Paul are going to have pretty similar run splits out there. He's actually going through some of the elite women. We saw that. There's Roderick on the other side. Felder is here in triathlon For to real. win. Yeah. Paul Felder crosses the line. Congratulations to them, okay, as we see Rudy. A look at the, the high five there, right? Rudy's nice. Rudy's paying respect. You know he's not going to catch Heather. Britain over the line to take second place. Big smiles from her. And he makes his final turn. Rudy Garcia Tolson will cross the line in third place for his team, Team Long. And it really is the start of something special for the PTO as well. We had Sam, the CEO, he was telling us about the series, where we're going next. Of course, we're going to Edmonton in July. I feel extra pressure being the hometown person in Edmonton. Um, I'm trying not to let it affect me too much mentally, but it definitely is a thing. And driving around the city, seeing flags of me, and not only that, just having my family and friends in town watching, and my mom very involved with the race. Um, it does bring an extra layer of pressure, and I definitely prefer to race as an underdog, kind of flying under the radar, so that's definitely not the case here in Edmonton. This one's going to be hard for for us, for the, the not for Christian because he's the Olympic champion. He is technically an ITU guy, but this is going to be a tough race for us to do well in, undoubtedly. The winning is the greatest feeling there is. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to beat me, I think. On a good roll, I would say, and hopefully I can take both the win on Sunday, but also with the 5% bonus point, it will mean that I will most likely be coming into Collins Cup as ranked number one. This year is about doing something new, and when the PTO Tour, I guess, was first announced, uh, I just put it on my calendar. I'm super happy and just 
yeah, really excited to, to be at this race and just do what I can on, on the course. It's the first ever PTO Tour event and uh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm fit, healthy and uh, going to race as hard as I can, so happy to be able to do that. I'm so excited to be here. I had the second fastest debut ever. I'm ready to go for this race. Just feels like a huge gift and I'm excited to see where I can mix it up. This is my first real big race of the season. I see myself as a long course athlete. I think I've shown that this is where really my strength is. Like I want to race for the win and yeah, but it will be a challenging one for sure. If we are live in over 160 territories over the course of this weekend. Look, here in Edmonton, first race of the PTO Tour. It's a new dawn in our sport. The, the prestige involved, I haven't seen a calibre field that we have assembled here today in, in, in my lifetime in the sport. So much on the line today. Hometown favourite, Paula Finlay of Kiss. She's made it abundantly clear that she wants the win here today. Athletes, you are in the hands of the stars. We set the world on fire. Well, you can see from that great aerial shot, they've got three or four trying to break away and look at the separation. But I think it's maybe the sixth or seventh athlete. Her just coming onto the right side of that boy, whereas they had to keep those orange markers always on the other side. And uh, this is a course, as you say, when you come back up onto shore, your heart rate starts climbing and you've got about 30 meters of running on the sand. I think some of the longer distance athletes really haven't got much practice on that format. That's you Ashley Gentle just coming out there, I think, at the back swim. of those four girls. That's a fantastic swim for her. And there's Paula Finley in seventh place, 29 seconds down. So that first group of five really have made a gap. That gap is absolutely huge now, isn't it? And they're only still just into the mid part of lap two. So that's going to really stretch by the time they finish the swim. So this should be Paula Finley coming out of the water now, I think. Finley should be in this group. Well, it's time to leave the water here in Harlech Park, that long blue carpet into the transition zone. And uh, from the first few strokes, we've had this young woman in the lead as Lopes from Brazil makes the way. It's a long run to get to the transition zone. We're only 12 seconds behind Vittoria Lopez, whereas that gap was bigger at the end of the second lap than it was at the end of the third. As we're seeing Ashley Gentle here, just trying to get her sleeves in, so she'll have had that rolled down underneath her swim skin. Well, Paula Finley just into the transition zone, 71 seconds down, and the legend just a few seconds back, Nicholas Berrick. So we have some serious talent coming out of the water within that first 75 seconds. I don't think it's going to be too long before Paula Finley hits the very front of this race. I think Paula on her day could do it. Ashley, Julie, Nicola, all could be there. That's a nice group. Ellie Solhouse, Nicholas Berg and Ashley Gentle. Only just on that 30 seconds back. These are all women that on any given day could win a race anywhere else around the world. Paula is really taking it to these girls. And, you know, Paula on form, as we keep saying, is nigh on her It's such a shame when we see these athletes not finish and Lopez will need to serve a 30 second penalty and it needs to be served before she hits T2. On paper, Ash Gentle can probably afford to have a two minute deficit and still run down Paula Finlay. However, that's on paper. Laura Phillips is just gliding across unleashing this her weapon. Paula's going to need to find another gear here pretty soon because they're taking big chunks of time out of here. any second here at speed as well. Let's see if there's any interaction at all as they go by. Absolutely nothing. Complete focus from both of those athletes. 
but you know wearing the number one you, you feel a target on your back you do and that's Laura Phillip here today she's she's our number one ranked athlete still running racing strong still racing strong still in third but not looking as comfortable as I have seen her in the past Sadara, who's coming up in fourth place, well, as long as she it. just gets the job done. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And then you've got Chelsea Sadara right behind, saying, "Uh-uh, uh, not today, my friend." Ashley Gentle from Australia will claim the first ever PTO Canadian Open. Paula Finley, the Olympian, the local girl, crosses the line in second. That's Respond. incredible! Look at that! Look Chelsea at that! Chelsea Sadara. But we have got the ingredients we need today for a race for the ages. We've got some top names here racing today. The athletes themselves arrived, what, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes or so ago. And I'd love to know from you whether the game for some of them has already begun. You can't go past Lionel Sanders as someone who is a home favourite. He's got grit, determination. The crowd are going to be behind him. Don't look past him. The calibre of athlete Alistair Brownlee is, would you ever write him off? Probably can't win it in the swim, but you could lose it. To Gustav Eden is almost unbeatable at this distance. He's incredible at this distance. He's a two-time half Ironman world champion, but he will be up at the pointy end. Christian Blumenfeld coming off the most unbelievable 12 months. I don't think anybody in triathlon history ever has or ever will do again what he's done. Olympic title, world title, another world title, fastest Ironman time ever. Can he top it off today? I'm gonna raise my voice. Tell us, Vicky, in that first few hundred meters, what's going on in your mind when you're standing there with 45 or 50 of the best people in the world? You really want to be as f close to the front as you possibly can be once you hit that first turn, boys. Just picking out, I believe, Henry Schumann there that with, is, the, yep. with the orange cap. No surprises to see him. He's leading that middle spearhead. Go, Schumann got to do this, and he's doing it to magic once again. Ali Brownlee looking fantastic. There he is himself, Lionel Sanders. Lots of time to make up. Look at the massive gap there. You can see the group of four to the group that has that has uh, Christian Blumenfeld and a group of about nine or ten. So that's right. He wasn't sure. He, he yeah. said he would have to have the swim of his career to like that front pack. Well, something we've not touched on yet in the swim, but he's having actually a really good swim. Is Gustav Eden the final the final hundred meters or so of this swim? Fantastic. That's. Henry Schoeman trying to get out of his speed suit. The two-time Olympic champion, Alistair Brownlee in red. Five, uh, four of those first six men have been to the Olympic Games. How special is that? Here and they I come now. I think that group will be together. Here we go, the next group out. You've got Christian Blumenfeld right behind him, but the fantastic swim for Gustav. Oh, really going. There is Lionel Sanders, and he will be virtually one of the last athletes, maybe the third last out, so he's going to have to have another one of those tooth-popping uh, bicycle rides. That's a great shot going up. This is about a 4% grade. It's Alistair Brownlee who is leading out there. Well, that is Sam Laidlaw, I think, and he is uh, showing no respect for the two-time Olympian Alistair Brownlee as these two guys are really starting to stretch things out here. Back in the great shot now of Christian Blumenfeld up on screen. He's well over two minutes down, so he is not making time right now. He's not. No. And look hasn't at, realized look at Lionel Sanders. He he's, not, yeah. he's not hanging around. Sanders is going to start catching over the next lap and a half. A lot of the people who came out of the water one to two minutes. Sense of, you know, there's Christian Blumenfeld about 150 plus. Well, Sam has taken over and it is Brownlee now in second. That's Gustav with Christian right behind him as he takes a little bit of a look back. Gustav even Gustav on screen here. Gustav looks incredible right now. He has really, I mean, he has picked it up completely. Distanced himself from that chase group that he was in. He's now caught Carl Smith and I think he's on the hunt now for both Alistair Browning and Sam Laidlow. He's moving himself up now and to the top dozen or so athletes. 
So that is an incredible move to Chris Sander. That, that's the way that Ali Brownlee loves to race. Or is he going to say, OK, I know I don't have the run fitness that I would like to have. Oh, look at Brown here. Brownlee. He, was gone. he, he rode dismounted. over that line. He dismounted over the line. Oh, so I did. think he's hoping that by returning there, that, he won't get a penalty. That is a well, very rookie mistake. Oh, I mean, really impressed with Sam Laidlow yeah. right now. Oh, Kyle, that is Carl Smith that had a little bit of a tumble. It's not Love the way you're going to want to start a 18-kilometer uh, run. And here we've got Lionel Sanders already in the transition. Incredible, incredible bike ride from Sanders. Oh, oh, oh. Gosh, so, now this is not good. It's really hard to know exactly what's going on, but oh, you can look, just uh, see his oh, face. This, this is not You've what Alistair Brownlee would want no. to see. And in that picture, just over is the Olympic, current Olympic champion and world champion at... Uh, Long course and short course. Yes, getting married later this oh, year. Oh my gosh, what have we got here? Oh, so we've got clots. a cramp. That's got to be a cramp for Christian oh, Blumenfeld. Oh. Look at that. This is a game of, we saw carnage yesterday, and right now. This is, this we is, did not predict No, this. we did not. non oh, oh, Now we've year. got Sam Laidlow with the no, same problem. Another cramp. It's cloud cover, so it's, it's humid very, very, today. Yeah, just starting to drop. Alistair Brownlee, now Christian Blumenfeld. No, I what think he's I'm not sure if that's a cramp. The way he was actually holding down on the pot, that makes me think he's pulled something. Oh, I, I, I totally agree with you. Christian Blumenfeld hot on backwards. It was just about 20 minutes ago that we wondered if he would be off the course and not able to finish, but he is eating into that gap. You can see there the top right side of the screen, that is Christian Blumenfeld. And down on the left side now, just 250 meters from the finishing line. It is Gustav Eden from Norway, part of the Norwegian train as he has absolutely raced to perfection. He looks over his shoulder, and I think for the first time, he's gonna realize that he's gonna have this thing, the victory, the Canadian Open. He's now starting to show some appreciation to the crowd. It's onto the blue carpet. As Gustav Eden from Norway, the man who has dominated this mid-distance is gonna win the Canadian Open. Solid swim, brilliant bike, and the day's most important factor, he got his job done on the run, Eden from Norway will win here in Canada. Christian Blumenfeld, and he's still sprinting to the finishing line. He that doesn't know any other way. Grabs the watch time at the finishing line. Christian Blumenfeld, boy, that is a gutsy race. Here he comes, he's gonna take the third position on the podium. Nobody would have mentioned his name before the day started. It has been a big weekend for Australia as Aaron Royal crosses the line in third place here at the PTO Canadian Open. Is that, Lionel Sanders is an absolute animal. That's yeah. all there is to it. He's an absolute animal. He, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He gives it his all every single time that he, he stands on a start line. And, you know, we were speculating, oh, we think we, he can make himself into top ten. We think he can make himself into the top five. He was just absolutely incredible. But I think with Alistair Brownlee, I mean, he really had some quite serious issues, stomach issues. Yeah. I don't think it was a lack of fitness that was the problem here. I think he actually had some, some nutrition issues and some hydration issues, which caused those cramps. So the way that he's come back, I thought he was going to have to step off the course. So, you know, hats off to Alistair Brownlee. That was a really superb way to finish. It has been a day of incredible surprises. No surprise to see two of those men on that podium, however. Gustav Eden, incredible efforts out there by Kristen Blumenfeld, the friendship of those two guys, the camaraderie, the training. Great to see Aaron Royal coming back from a couple of years of injuries, of challenges, of not even knowing if he's going to be in this event. You can see how emotional it was for him. It's been a weekend of age group racing and culminating now with three absolute warriors, the new era, the PTO, Canadian Open. And now the real tough decisions are gonna start and that is for the captains of Europe. Who do the European captains take? And who do the international captains take? Um, the US team, a big, big finish today, but all of these men are trying to put their names forward to be considered for the Collins Cup, which is just over four weeks from now. This year's Collins Cup will be twofold what last wow. year's was. I just think, you know, last year was the first year there were some athletes that didn't really understand what it was all about. This year, I mean, you've got athletes that have travelled from all over the world to get to this race just to give themselves a chance to yeah. make the Collins Cup.
Yeah, my win in Edmonton was really special. Uh, yeah, I had such a great time at that race. I really enjoyed pretty much every aspect of it. And I guess coming back to training, it was, you know, in some aspects tough because, you know, you've just come off this great high, but I was also really motivated by it because it really spurred me on for the Collins Cup and then, um, yeah, really focus again and stay motivated for training, to be honest. Um, yeah, definitely Flora Duffy um, and Ashley, so they're both uh, Team International, so it won't be both of them, but um, they're, uh, I mean, at the moment I would say the two the two top contenders. The US team definitely, we were the underdogs and we surprised a lot of people. Uh, I, I think this year we also go into it underdogs and I'd like to think we're going to surprise some people. The, the, main, the main thing is that, that kind of battle aspect that really gets people watching. For a long time I was uh, training hard to represent France. Now to, to be the only French person here representing Europe is another step again. And uh, it's, it's all been a bit of a whirlwind and if my season was to end tomorrow, I would already be happy with what, what I've achieved. Absolutely, I'm here for redemption, I guess you could say, and I just think I'm more prepared for what the week entails, and, and the week starts today and, and leading up into it, and uh, the Collins Cup is a lot about mental warfare leading into the race, and last year I just, I didn't do a good job. I was up against the GOAT, and I didn't do a good job, and, and now I'm prepared for whatever matchup I get. I didn't even have a start for Canada, so I just certainly didn't think I was going to have a start for, for the Collins Cup. So it's yeah, it's pretty stress, pretty special to be here. I, I, yeah, I genuinely think that we can we can take it to to the Europeans and, and keep the perception that they're the best in the world. But um, yeah, I guess it, we'll see on Saturday. But uh, I know that I'm feeling confident. That the team international are feeling confident. The captains are confident. They're you know, not trying to put pressure on us, but they have the belief that that they think we can take the Collins Cup. And, tell that it was a genuine belief that they had. We have got a stellar cast. We have been selected to represent the teams from the US, from Europe and the internationals, and they will do battle over a series of 12 races to see who rules the sport of triathlon. Collins Cup returns. The biggest team event in triathlon is back once again. These are the best professionals in the world. Once that gun goes off, it is all business. Most time for the talking to stop and the action to begin. The 2022 Collins Cup is about to get underway. Well, this is it. Three into one does not go, but who will stand tallest at the end of the day and who will lift the Collins Cup in 2022? the reigning Olympic champion and world champion. I think it would be kind of cool to battle against her. After last year especially, I, I want to perform well. Once the gun goes off, you can change into a completely different person. I want to win. I'm here to win. I welcome anyone. We are favorites because we have a title to defend. race like someone's going to catch you, give 110%. Is the start of something bigger than just ourselves as professional athletes in the sport? Team Europe has become even stronger than what we were last year. We're all coming in hungry and we have absolutely nothing to lose here. What we've got put in on the line and what we've sacrificed to get to this level. Strategically, I do believe we can actually win. When race day comes, I, I will be ready mentally. I'm feeling confident that Team International feeling confident. Pushing until the finish and giving it your all on the day. Yeah, I'm really honored to get the chance to race here. has taken off. They're much closer than I would have anticipated. She understands the importance of a fast start. The first of the Collins Cup athletes, Flora Duffy, hit short. That is Daniela Reef, who's not far behind. Another yellow cap for Team International, looking over her shoulder with a large gap back to Chelsea Sedaro and Laura Phillips. 
This is Paula Finlay here, just about to come out of the water. She has managed to put a little bit of a gap, definitely not very sizable and not definitive at this point. The two of them last year at this event swam shoulder to shoulder. Are we going to see a complete rematch of that? So fantastic start for Team International and they are right together still. Brazilian Vitoria Lopez out of the water and we have seen the first pass of the day. Daniela looking like Daniela of old and just laying it down. This is the box office one. The men's matches are starting in match seven. Olympic champion, Ironman world champion, Olympic bronze medalist, and Ben Canute all going head to head to head here. Ben Canute is going out pretty strongly here. Nicholas Spirig storming to the front in match four. And yes, he has caused a rather large ruckus this week. He's excited to prove a point after what's been said. Sam Laidlow doesn't need any wetsuit. That guy is flying on top of the water. That it's going to be a very, very large lead for Sam Laidlow out of the water. She's now 2.15 ahead. And this is the Daniela Riff we all know and love. She is one of the greatest long distance athlete, athletes that we've ever seen. Match four then for the men here. Patrick Langer, two-time Ironman world champion. Debut here, the captain's pick, Jason West. Aaron Royal, a debut he kind of asked to go ahead in that PTO in Canada. And I mean, it worked out well, getting the bronze there. And that means he is going to make his debut at the Collins Cup. And they're getting out so quickly here, really fighting for every inch in the water. This looks like an overtake by the international team right there. We both put our hands up here in commentary. So we're not falling off our chairs, but those guys almost toppled. Paula Finley has taken the lead by four minutes. Well, it is the 11th of the waves. You have to think that Eden is the swimmer of this bunch, but we've been surprised in a couple of those waves. The whole Collins Cup might just come down to these athletes. So expect them to be close. This is Aaron Royal then, out leading this bike leg at the moment. There is absolutely no other athlete around him. Then it, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a, a unique position to say the least. We need to start making this time back up on Sam Labour, and that's exactly what they're doing. Sam Long said several times, you know, you know, what, I hope you cramp. Doesn't want to see any other athlete all day long. When Daniela Reef is on her A game, that is gonna probably be the fastest bike of the day. So they are closing that down with every kilometer. Ashley Gentle overtaking Laura Phillip there. Well, Paula Finley then, again, having a great run. But Nicholas Spirig at the moment in that driving seat. Magnus having an unbelievable ride. Until then, still continuing that great run of form from that PTO event in Canada where she had a, a great swim as well. I think she came out in, a, in the top group there, maybe fifth or sixth, and then she just progressed, didn't she? She had to, to sit in second and she overhauled um, Paula Finley there to, to get that eventual win. The Europeans have moved into a sizable lead. Lionel Sanders now for the first time today has moved in the lead. As we can see, poor Sam Laidlow has stopped and is struggling. You can see Sam Laidlow headlong. He looks very, very dejected right now. Is this sweet justice for Sam Long? Because I mean, Sam Long said, I hope you cramp. Wow, I didn't, I really did not expect this to happen. We are watching here one of the greatest women that I've ever watched race triathlon. Now it's nearly six minutes between Daniela and Flora and Daniela is on the final stretch. You can see that she's running on grass now. And she will have an incredible victory for Europe here as Daniela Reef claims maximal points. That is an incredible silver medal performance today for Bermuda's Flora Duffy as she will cross the line in second place. Yeah, at the moment, Team US are struggling for race victories. Yeah, we're 
we're just seeing Sarah True here come into that final section around the horse track. So she will be the final athlete to finish in match one. And just behind her, we can see Ashley Gentle, who is leading in match two. So it looks like she is going to take all the points back to Team International. In Ashley Gentle takes a win in wave number two. Paula Finley is going to claim victory and maximal points. The international team going into the lead. And Nicola Spirig is going to take this one in match four. Holly Lawrence, job done for Team Europe. Team Europe are doing the job at the moment, 52 and a half points. He is in full flight now, Christian Blumenfeld. And look, he's lapping up this crowd. Lionel Sanders puts his foot down. And look, he has left Sam Long in his wake. He has done it back-to-back -back victories here. Dominating performance by the 24-year-old as Team Europe continues to pile up the wins. You can see Aaron is in a whole world of pain there. He's tactic for today had to be to go out hard and to hope he never saw one of his competitors again and he's delivered that. Aaron's winning his matchup for Team International. Second time victory now for Europe as the man who has not lost I think a PTO race. Gustav Eden will claim victory here for the European team. Yeah lovely to see that moment as Sam Laidlow actually makes it across the line and goes straight in for a handshake and a hug with Sam Long. To Sam Long's credit, he was right there. As you can see in the background is Lionel Sanders. Well, at the end of 12 enthralling matchups, it is congratulations to Team Europe, who once again retain the Collins Cup. About it coming thick and fast. Not long until we are off to Dallas, the 17th and 18th of September, showcasing the very best the sport of triathlon has to offer. Very warm welcome to Dallas, a stunning setting for triathlon's US Open. And this is the third event of the PTO calendar, which means we have got 100 kilometers of the Fast and the Furious. Being able to race here in uh, Dallas in the US Open is uh, something I've really been looking forward to. Of course, it's uh, when I look at the, the start line in, for this race, for instance, I'm the, the first ranked athlete. <laughs> It was tough not to participate in the Collins Cup. I'm mostly here to just see where I am, just to get back into the racing mindset. Like I want to know the athletes that I'm racing. I found it really motivating to almost be the underdog again. And yeah, I've definitely got my eyes on the top spot. I think I'm the athlete that always does want to win and be the best. So yeah, they've had a, a nice time whilst I haven't been here, but I look forward to being in the mix as well. Uh, I just have one more year left. If I make top 10, it would be awesome. I think I would be really happy with that. This level of excitement once the process is pretty high. A very warm welcome to Dallas. A stunning setting for triathlon's US Open. And this is the third event of the PTO calendar, which means we have got 100 kilometers of the Fast and the Furious. We have got $1 million up for grabs on the finish line, and we've got one big question that needs answering. In the intense heat and the draining humidity, who comes through to make themselves a hero this weekend? I got a black heart, I got a lost mind. Trying to find the truth inside these white lies. But I'm not a soldier, always be AWOL. Myself behind these brick walls Athletes, you are in the hands of the starters. We are racing. First tour event in the US for the PTO, so a very special weekend. Already seeing some spreading out in the women's field. No surprise at all to 
see Lucy Charles Barkley in that blue suit and the silver cap. She's trying to hang on to the toes there of Lucy Charles Barkley. That is the red cap of Taylor Nip. Yeah, so it looks like these two have Broke put some way. distance in. So they've got to get up those steep steps. It's about a 150 meter run before they get back into the water. That's in, and that's a really long run to do. It also changes your heart rate. So we did just see there, Ashley Gentle moving up through that pack. She swam up on the hips of quite a few of athletes. We've just got a, a time split up here, and I believe it was 31 seconds between Taylor Nib to Lottie Wilms, who was at the lead of that chase group. Lucy is stealing a bit of a march on her here through transition. And she's already out on the bike course. That pack didn't split up on the second lap. They're, they're going to be a big pack heading out onto this 80 kilometre bike team together. That pack was about a minute down from Taylor Nib. The gap is closing. Yeah, from that pass. aerial shot. As Taylor Nib flies by Lucy Charles, she didn't need the full 45 seconds. She's absolutely blitzed by her there. Oh, oh gosh. No, this is not good. It was obviously a loose cable. And that's why she was pushing such a giant gear. Well, she's realized there is something drastically wrong and she's uh, stopped on the side. The bike leg has been bad for Lucy. That is not what you want to be seeing when you look over your shoulder. It's Paula Finlay in the green suit. Uh, those big names, Lawrence, Duffy, all solid athletes starting to come through now on the bike. Latest timing checks did say that they're around about a minute and 20 down on the likes of Taylor Nib and Lucy Charles Barclay right at the front of the race. You can see Lucy Charles Barclay on the screen now, and she has been given that bottle. She's struggling though, you can see it's on a she weird struggling. angle. It yeah. is on a weird angle. Look, she's really struggling to get it in. We just see Lucy Charles has dropped another bottle there. That is the second bottle we've seen. Her. On the way to a successful day, this woman will be in and out in less than 20 seconds. And that was a great transition from Taylor Nib. Well, here comes a woman that led out of the water. She used to see exactly what's in those running legs because she looked fantastic at the World Championships three weeks ago. Chase group comes in off the bike. It's Ashley Gentle really starting to move. That is Paula <laughs> Finley giving a cooling off towel to Flora Duffy, who now says, I thank you, but I must leave. But I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to see you later. This is Taylor Nip. She's out front. She's sitting pretty. She's able to control the pace herself. She's controlling the race right now. Is Ash Gentle able to make her, her way up onto that last step on the podium's third place? I know that it'd be a great way for her to finish the season. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing right now with Taylor Nib. None of us really knew what sort of form she was coming in here with. And here comes Ashley Gentle. She is moving through this field. Wow, yeah. look at this. There's Ashley in fourth and our Olympic Games gold medalist. Flora Duffy looks like she's really struggling there. You can see the fatigue on her face, her arms are tightened up. Ashley Gentle, who loves the heat, looks like she's in a driver's seat right now in fourth place. And Ashley Gentle now is gonna go by and not even stop to say hello. She's got, uh, she's got Miss Lucy Charles Barkley on her mind. First of all, she understand that she has Ashley Gentle coming at her at a really incredible pace. Look at this, this is really interesting. Looking at Taylor Nip, she's realized I need to slow down now. Vicky, look at this. We have a pack of three, and there's the pass. Ashley Gentle has passed Lucy Charles Barkley. Oh. Actually, that's the first time we've seen Taylor stop not through an aid station. That's, Ooh. that is, that's. Is she coming apart a little bit? She's got three minutes, but this is, this is absolutely critical. Did, Taylor was there a little to... shake of her head? There's a little shake of her yeah. head. Ashley giving absolutely everything she's got left to get through this final three kilometers now. She's just come into shot. She can see Taylor Nib rounding that corner in front of her. And I don't think it would be premature to say that right now the smart person's money is on Ashley Gentle to take the win. That number one lead spot in her sights right now. We're going to see the pass any second now, aren't we? She's gone. Seven. She's through. She's passed nearly seven minutes she's taken out of Taylor Nib on this run. Unbelievable. She is approaching the tape. There's the smile. Now she's taking it all in. What a moment. Ashley Gentle has done it again. 
And talking of effort and remarkable performances, Taylor Nib bringing it home for her team. She comes over the line. She takes the second spot. It's going to be an emotional day for her as well. But she is just about to cross the line in third place here at the PTO US Open. Congratulations to Lucy Charles Barkley. Taylor Nib and Ashley Gentle. Triathlon is commonly acknowledged to be the ultimate test of endurance. And for those at the elite level, it requires you to push yourself beyond limits that most of us can only dream of. And then every so often a day comes along that requires you not only to push yourself beyond your physical extremes, but to do so in extreme conditions. And this is one of those days. The time for talking is almost done. It is nearly over to the action. There's a real nervous energy in the air today. Come to you quite literally on this occasion. It's about three and a half hours until we are back standing right here to work out who has handled these conditions the best. Athletes, you are in the hands of the starter. Take your position. And they're off! Well, we are in for, I think, a day of absolute carnage. Latorn leading the way right now. You can see at the very back, I think, a Sam Long, a Lionel Sanders. That is Aaron Royal coming back towards the front end of this field. Just behind him, laid low. The uh, pink cap was Daniel Beckgard. The Australian is leading here in the first of two laps. And the real question will be, where is Lionel Sanders and Sam Long? Well, they're coming to the end of the swim. Aaron Royal first out of the water. Sam Laidlow, these are all the usual players. And a large group of men now all coming out pretty close together. We go, there's Lionel Sanders right now. So Sam Long. There he is. Sebastian Kinley has been able to stay right on the back of this group. Here's Lionel Sanders who will be over two minutes down. There's the energetic man, the Sam Long. He's an, he's an animal when he races. Sam Laidlow right there, just coming through the transition zone. Long train of nine or ten men are coming through the transition. It is now approaching 100 degrees out on this course. Oh, we've got a bit of a problem here. Lionel Sanders and Sam Long will be coming through the transition zone. We have a, another victim. That is Andre Lopez there. Back behind of Sam Long in that pack. And we already know that that group is taking out significant time from the lead at this rate they will catch the front of the race by the time they hit the run. Sam Laidlow in the top spots right now. So there is Sam Long looking like he's going to do a, a triple overtake. But Magnus Dietlef, he's the all-round full package. But that Sam Long is just blowing by on the bike. Sam Long has made another pass. It's that man moving his way through the field again. Lionel and he really is one of the best in the world. Here we go, this is the first time we've seen Florian Anger take to the front. Sam Long, there's nobody would have ridden faster at this point on the course. It's in his running legs and this is going to come down to a hard run. Well we are into the last kilometer or so. To As we can see Flo Anger Getting ready as he comes in now. And are coming in at lightning speed, both Sam Long and Magnus Ditlev. Flo Anger, he looks fantastic. I think Sam Long has one of two objectives, either to win this thing today or to probably be taken off on a cart. 
we can see Magnus Dietlev. Right in the background there, we've got Colin Chartier and Sam Laidlow. It's Lionel Sanders. He is in the back of shot there behind Daniel Beckergaard. That shot there just shows how close he's coming. There's the pass. Sam Long is running up first. So Sam's taken that minute behind that he was when he came into transition. The drama of the race. We see Ditlev coming through there as well. Right on his heels. Magnus Ditlev takes Florian Angert. Lionel Sanders catch the eye of that man, Colin Chartier. They are training partners. So that's him just making the pass into third place. He is moving the fastest of anyone on course at just 39 seconds down. So Magnus Ditlev is now down to 15 seconds behind wow. and only 16 behind him is Colin Chartier. Sam Long is out in front, but he has some chasers closing him down. And just look at the pace of Colin Chartier, full scent, really going for it. Sam Long is disproving the mystery pro. Oh, look, he's closing in. The man in red is closing in on Dinklev. He's done Colin it. Chartier passes into second place. This is redemption for the Americans. This is it. Here we go, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Magnus Ditlev is holding that gap, almost like he's got a laser beam on them. 10 seconds with just a couple of kilometers, 1.7 kilometers left to go. But he kicks on, he's made his move. That was a hell of a surge for this late in the race. This is the big story of the day, the American. Colin Chartier comes across the line. First place for Colin Chartier. Here we can see Magnus Ditlev appears to have really left Sam Long behind. The delights across the finish line for Magnus Ditlev. And he just collapses the other side. Magnus Ditlev comes in in second place. And Sam Long stumbles over the line himself for third. What a race he had today. A quite fantastic race by all three men. What a fantastic two days of racing it has been from here in Dallas. Well, we promised you action-packed drama, and my word, the athletes have delivered and a whole lot more. It is certainly an exciting time, not only for the sport of triathlon, but also for the PTO Tour, which will return next year even bigger and even better. So the prestige involved, I haven't seen a calibre field that we have assembled here today in, in, in my lifetime in the sport. I'll lay out a face. Ladies and gentlemen, are you in for a treat? Put it all on show. This is anybody's game. With my heart on this is history in the making.